Hey guys and welcome. Welcome to another day of the EMC. If any of you are confused right now, well that's fine because you should see me because I've been having to do all this complex stuff that I'm not good at. But yes, I am standing in for Shiva today. It's G Advance here. But she is currently doing the Bounty Hunter series. If you want to go check that out, guys, that's on Hitbox right now. Somebody has the link in the chat somewhere, but either way, this is the first game of the day. This game's a little bit earlier than some of the other games. This is going to be Team Empire versus Insane Gaming, who are apparently are sponsored by Q-Cyber now. You can see because they, they get a fancy new logo. I don't know if that shows up on the overlay or not. Oh, I'm so bad at this stuff, but... Anyway, guys, yeah, I'm here on my own. Later, hopefully, I will be joined by Vikramon, so I will be doing everything on my own, but... Yeah, Team Empire, I mean, you know them all, they've been on an absolute tear recently. A massive win streak they went through. Probably, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's the biggest win streak that any pro team has ever even had in games. And, well, Team Empire are here, they ban out the Ember Spirit as well as the Batrider Lycan, as well as Invoker, banned out by the side of Q-Cyber Insane Gaming. And Team Empire, they first picked themselves up, the Ancient Apparition, very good hero versus high regen heroes, very powerful in a team fight, and can be quite useful early on, but he does lack disables, of course, his damage is great, but as a support hero as well, he can be slightly greedy, Q-Cyber on the other hand, they could pick up themselves, well, a fairly defensive combo so far, could both be support heroes, but likely... We'll be seeing that Naga Siren, the Radiance Rush Naga Siren carry hero for them. He's going to be the, uh, she's going to be in the carry position. And Bane has also been picked up here. Very good hero as far as lockdown has two hard disables, but one of which is channeled. So Team Empire, they pick up a bit of a counter hero here. The counter to a Bane is, of course, going to be that Rubik. Not only can you interrupt. The Fiend's Grip, you can also spell steal it. It doesn't actually show up on Rubik because his player card's broken, or his hero card is a little bit broken. But the great thing about having Rubik versus Bane is that you can just instantly steal the Fiend's Grip. You can interrupt his Fiend's Grip then with a telekinesis, and you can Fiend's Grip somebody else. And generally, there isn't a huge amount that Bane can do about that. That said, Bane, he does do a lot more damage than the Rubik. Rubik, not a high damage support. He pretty much has to steal some of those great spells for himself. At the moment, there's not a huge amount he can get. He can maybe get Song, which can be useful. But the biggest thing for him, definitely, this game, is going to be Fiend's Grip. Heroes banned out now. Team Empire, they take out the Mirana, as well as the Disruptor. Mirana, Bane, of course. A combo you never want to be playing against. Even if they're not laning together, they can still work together. Anytime the Bane roams around to your lane... It's pretty much just an easy arrow setup for the Mirana. You need specific heroes, and generally you need creeps to be able to get in the way and absorb that arrow for you. So normally if you are going to let that through, you want to try and put a Nature's Prophet versus it, but it still loses the lane. So that's just the best you can do. On the other side, on the other side of things, in Safe Gaming, they target the carries for the moment. Because Team Empire, they haven't picked themselves up with any carry potential whatsoever, but they take out the Luna as well as Spectre. A fairly good pushing hero from the Lunar Spectre, a little bit different, more of a uh, more of a mostly weak in the lane hero, can't do very much, but that turns up for team fights and ganks and can get himself a big gold lead just from turning up and kill stealing basically. And Q Cyber now, well, the next couple of heroes they pick up the Nyx Assassin as well as the Centaur War Runner. So unless this is going to be a mid centaur, we're probably going to see this Bane and Nyx Assassin. They're going to be working together as supports. Centaur, on the other hand, he'll likely go onto the offlane. That said, this is uh, this is still pretty, you know, you could do a lot of different things with this. Nyx could still be a core hero. Naga could still be a support. It, it's all interesting as far as what they can do. The safest and probably the most, you know, the standard way of doing this is just to run this as a defensive tri-lane. It is a little bit weak because Nyx is not a great hero in, in a tri-lane. And Bane as well, not great for picking off kills. But they can gank together a little bit. And the Centaur War Runner, he'll go the off lane. Team Empire, though, they pick up the Clockwork. A favorite hero of mine, I've got to say. I love seeing Clockwork in games. Very manly initiator. And the great thing about Clockwork 
is that not only is he a great initiator, but he's a great initiator who doesn't need a blink dagger. Recently, we've been seeing a lot of initiations from Nyx Assassins, Centaurs, even Slardars, all of these heroes who have great AoE stuns and disables that they can use. But the big thing is, is all those heroes pretty much need a blink dagger. Nyx Assassin, not quite so much, but if the enemy team are five manning, they're going to have sentries, they probably have a gem. It's not going to work. Shadow Fiend picked up for Team Empire here. That's going to be probably their solo mid. Could be on the safe lane as well. It is a little bit dangerous to run a Shadow Fiend. We've all seen free to play what happens. Ice Ice Ice, not a fan of picking Shadow Fiend. It gets you killed a lot. It's a very easy hero to gank during the early stages of the game. Insane Gaming, they do have fairly good ganking heroes with the Bane as well as the Nyx Assassin. It's not the best ganking combo ever. You'd like to swap out that Bane for somebody else, but mostly they need these heroes to be able to support their Mega Siren. So right now, the great thing for Team Empire is they have very powerful team fights, some strong initiation. They don't need too many items on their clockwork, on their offlaner, unlike Insane Gaming, but their late game damage is nothing compared to ne to compared to Mega Sirens and Naga Siren, of course, once she gets that Radiance, she farms everything on the map. It really is just, just horrifying to see be on the other team. She farms every single part of the map, the enemy jungle, your own jungle, all three lanes. There's just illusions everywhere, they burn everything down. The last bands out here from both teams then, Doom is going to be taken out by Insane Gaming and Slark. Taken out by Team Empire here, so Insane Gaming... Possibly looking for that snowball mid. That's certainly what Team Empire thought by taking out the Slark. But there are other options for them as well. It could be just looking for... Uh, well, a lot of different things for them. But they could just be looking for some sort of tempo controller for them. Somebody to get them through the early game. There is a Storm Spirit left in the game. And there isn't a huge amount of Disable on the side of Team Empire right now. Yeah, and they do go for it. I was going to say... There's just not enough Disable to deal with a Storm Spirit this game. And this forces Team Empire into a position where they have to think about a solo mid who has a hard Disable. Something like a Dragon Knight, he'll do okay in the lane versus Storm Spirit. It's a classic matchup. Dragon Knight just kind of farms okay-ish in the lane. He never wins his lane, but that's to be expected. Dragon Knight never wins any lanes. That's not the point. They could also go for another hero like a Beastmaster. He might farm just a little bit better in the lane. But pretty much, again, the same sort of matchup. Bit heavier on the Disable, though, and does give them better map control. It's not as great of a pushing hero, though. And I'm not sure that Boar would be especially helpful for them this game. Might be useful versus the Centaur. Just send it off to go and annoy the Centaur, stop him from being able to use a Blink Dagger. But for the moment, Team Empire, I feel like they've been caught in a little bit of a net here by the draft of uh, Insane Gaming. Because... It, Team Empire, they don't have the right heroes to go for an aggressive try lane. They don't have... The, so they have to run this safe. The Shadow Fiend, he could go mid versus the Storm Spirit. And actually, Team Empire, a surprise pick from them. They pick up the Faceless Void. Probably one of the biggest go big or go home heroes in the game. Can disable absolutely everybody. But if you screw it up, you will disable your entire own team as well. He does some serious damage. He is weak in the laning stage, though. So this tri lane, it might suffer versus the Centaur War Runner here. But that said, just the just the uh, the cold feet. Is it cold feet? No, the chilling touch. Cold feet's the other one. Chilling touch coming out from the ancient apparition. Just that might be able to give them po the possibility of you know threatening this centaur, giving him the opportunity to go for a kill. I need to make sure. That my overlays are all right here, because otherwise Shiva will beat me. Look at this, guys. Isn't that just a smooth transition? Hello, guys, and thank you very much for joining in. My name's G Advance here, casting on twitch.tv slash Shiva Gaming. I'm standing in for her for the moment. She is on the Bounty Hunter series on the side of Team Empire. We have Mag. He's going to be the offlaner for the team here. He's already got himself pulled a little bit of a... Uh, Pulled a little bit of a ward here. The mid for the team, it is actually going to be Resolution, so he will play the Shadow Fiend mid. I mean, I was expecting them to put the, on the safe lane at first, but then once they drafted the, the Faceless Void, that, that pretty much secures them as having the Faceless Void safe lane. Uh, Resolution, he's on the mid here. He has been pulled a fair amount here of Tango, so he will be able to last hit fairly okay here. But the Storm Spirit should still beat him in the lane as far as the very start of this. 
I should really have the default announcer on, because otherwise I have this axe mega kills thing that just cuts through everybody. He's going to be on the solo mid. The supports for the team, Vanscore, he's going to be on the Rubik. The other is going to be always one of fly upon his ancient apparition. And of course, last but not least, the surprise pick for the team. It is the Faceless Void here. I almost just hope Faceless Void wins because I want to see this hero in the meta more because he's so exciting to cast. He can absolutely destroy in team fights with Chronosphere if he gets everybody. He's an immense hero as far as damage output is concerned, but he is vulnerable. He's very weak in the laning stage, and arguably his mid-game damage can be a little bit unreliable. Often you have to go a bit glass cannony. It depends on build. We'll see what Silent wants to go for here. On the side of Insane Gaming, it is going to be the captain for the team, or... Uh, no, the captain for the... Are one of these the captain for the team? Either way, the supports for the team, they're smoked up here. It's Obi-Wan Banan as well as Big Num. It looks like they might actually try and hide in the trees here, waiting for a gank on the mid. They know they're looking for the Shadow Fiend. They know the one fiend early on. The solo mid for the team, actually going to be Aloha Dance here. Stand in for them, but he's played with a few times. He's on the Naga Siren. Looks like he'll be bottle rushing, so they need to beat this Shadow Fiend early on, because otherwise... Base damage wise, the Shadow Fiend actually has more, and that's that's pretty unusual. Off laner for the team, it is going to be Judo. He's picking up the Centaur War Runner, and on the safe lane, it's going to be Ink Visitor here. He's on the Storm Spirit for the team. No engagement so far, team's playing relatively safe. There's a little bit of a ward dropped off from, uh, well, two wards dropped off from the side of Team Empire. This one here, this doesn't block this camp. I think it might block this camp. This camp's um, spawn radius is a little bit weird sometimes. But with these supports mid, Rubik is going to be standing around maybe to try and defend resolution. But Obi-Wan Banan and Big Num, they're hiding in the trees here. They won't be spotted out. And it all depends on this block. If Aloha Dance can get a good enough block, if they can land the stun on resolution when he moves out of position... Then they will go for this kill opportunity on him here. But the Rubik, as well as always want to fly actually on the Ancient Apparition, they're going in for the first blood as well. They have the advantage. They're coming in here, but they're going to go on Resolution. A fair amount of damage is done. The resolution being gone on here does get killed off by the Riptide, but Aloha Dance, he's going to get turned around on that chilling touch, doing a lot of extra damage. Damage done to Obi-Wan Banan. And well, first blood, it does go to the side of Q Insane. But Empire, they do get themselves a return kill. Resolution immediately TPs back to the lane and wants to get himself some last hits already. A pretty even amount for them, but the Naga Siren, I believe she gets the first blood. Yeah, she gets the first blood there, so dying doesn't matter to her. She manages to buy her boots and a bottle here. This will be a pretty big advantage for him in the middle lane. In the meantime, on the bottom lane, Ink Visitor. He will be seemingly solo here versus Mag, so Mag should have an opportunity. If he gets a couple of power cogs off of here, he can maybe put some more pressure on this Storm Spirit, but he's not likely to crush him in the lane or anything like that. That said, the clockwork, he, yeah, well, they're pretty much even for the moment. The supports will come in now. It looks like maybe Obi-Wan Banan. Well, he's only level 1, and he was forced to pick up the Nightmare level 1, so for the moment, not much he can do to threaten Mag here. Maybe if he goes around behind, but it looks like they're just going to stack and pull. On the top lane, Judo. Already used up a couple of hoof stomps up here, actually. Not sure entirely what that was for, but he's picked up Return. Just so that these uh, these low HP heroes, both of these two, do not have good HP pools. If they try to harass hit the Centaur, they'll struggle just as much as he will. And with the Centaur, yeah, he's trying to steal creeps here. They picked him up, they tried to take the creep off him. Chilling Touch goes off, but it will not proc. And Judo, well, he's just able to walk out of there in the end. Mid lane does appear to be going in Resolution's favor just because of the uh, the extra damage he's taken with the Wraith Band early on. He is able to build up these souls, and this could be a problem. The supports on the side of Q and say they will have to gank this Shadow Fiend a fair amount to deal with him. Naga Siren in the meantime. Ooh. Mag, he's picked up a double damage rune here. He's faster than this Bane here. He's got boots as well. If he manages to trap him in the cogs, there is support on the way, possibly. Obi-Wan Banan, he'll block him the Nightmare. I'm surprised the power cogs weren't used by Mag then. He does only have level 1 battery assault, which isn't a huge amount of damage. But at the very least, I mean, Obi-Wan Banan didn't have any items. So 
with a DD rune as well, could have tried to force the issue for a kill there, but Ink Visitor and Big Num, well, they could be there soon enough. Ink, though, he'll struggle to actually get in and do the damage with the Static Remnant. And, well, Mag here, he's just being forced out a little bit by these guys. In the meantime, though, both teams playing relatively passive here. A little bit more pressure being put on Judo. Cold Feet, this might actually proc on him. He has to get out of here in time. It does proc, but... It's only the level 1 cold feet, so it doesn't even matter to him, and Judo will just walk back to base. He'll pick up his Tranquil Boots. He's not doing badly on XP, but he's not going to do quite as well as Mag is going to do here. And Although, that said, for the moment, Mag is putting himself in a lot more danger of dying, but he is being zoned out fairly effectively by Obi-Wan Banan here. In the meantime, though, Aloha Dance. Looks like he made a mistake in the middle lane, got double raised, possibly, and, well, Resolution... He's pretty obviously won his lane at this point. 21 to 11 for him. And Aloha Dance, only 12 for 1. Aloha Dance doing his best to, you know, force him out with the Riptide. And he'll try to farm up a lot as well. He's going for the just pure farming build here. But he'll struggle versus Resolution. Especially with the rune control that Shadow Fiend is able to get by pushing out these waves better. And the big base damage advantage on him as well. I mean, just a, just a better mid lane hero once he's got past that level 1, level 2 stage, where he just does no damage and he, he doesn't do anything at that stage. Now, of course, he's a fair amount ahead. I mean, look at the difference in base damage. Resolution, almost up to 100 damage. Aloha Dance, 64. I mean, just not even close here. And both teams playing p relatively passive. Both teams running safe lane, tri lanes. Surprise neither team, though, are trying for kills. I mean... The offlaner for the side of Empire, he is a difficult hero to kill, especially for a Stormspear who needs to get in there and drop his remnant pretty much on top of him. But Mag here, he's he's playing relatively far back, he's getting pushed back a fair amount, but these supports are not getting enough on the side of uh on the side of uh Q Insane. In the meantime, the Empire supports they're getting a fair amount more from these pools. Their carry is pretty much on the same sort of level as well. Faceless Void, he's just picked himself up some treads and a poor man's shield. Otherwise, we'll be thinking about what sort of mid-game items that he'll need. Might be thinking about a BKB, but it does make you vulnerable to the Naga Siren. He might need it against the Storm Spirit, though. Judo, still being forced out a little bit here. He's relatively even with Mag for the moment. Mag seems to be a little bit behind on the gold. Possibly just thinking about what he wants to go for. Room control here. Big Num is going to get himself a haste rune. This could be the opportunity to try for a kill on resolution. They do need it. He might even be going Hand of Midas here. He's picked up Gloves of Haste first. Generally, if you're going for the treads and you're on the Shadow Fiend, you just want the damage out of the extra DPS output, I would assume normally you would pick up the, uh, the Band of Elven skin. It could only be something small. Often something like that. Is just down to each personal player. Resolution though. He's playing safe for the moment. He knows that the Nyx Assassin has been missing from that for a long time. He's basically just been pulling. But Mag will hopefully be able to say whether he has or not. Actually they're going to go in on Mag here. The Nightmare goes off. Now the Impale. Ink Visitor going in. Rubik has TP'd in though. Double cogs from Mag. He's got them both disabled. Big Num. Going to get cold feet in, but Ink Visitor already 6. They do take out the Nyx Assassin. He's going to keep on diving, though. They go and take out the Ancient Apparition. Now it's only the Rubik here. He has a Fade Bolt. Doesn't need to use it. Gets the return kill. And despite some nice kills there for Ink Visitor, I feel like the rotations from Empire well worth it. They lose their safe lane carry there. Because both the, ro both the supports on the side of Empire, they rotated here. TP'd in to try and save Mag. Mag, of course, getting a beautiful double power cogs. Oh, mid lane. The Song of the Siren used. Big Num trying for the stun on Resolution. Resolution, knowing that he's going to die, he just goes for the Requiem of Souls, actually, now instantly skilled it. Tries for the kill. Does manage to pick up the Nyx Assassin on his death. He went for the Courier first. After he died, he did manage to get the double Requiem, I believe. I think he got off. No, I think he just got, actually, his death Requiem. Doesn't look like it was enough souls. He skilled Requiem just to try and turn around and got a kill. An Empire not giving any ground here. Despite the fact that their lane's arguably weaker. Oh, and Vanscore. Oh, no. He didn't quite get it. He got the Riptide there. But 
Still not a bad skill for him to steal. Already level 6 here. Ancient Apparition actually manages to get a heal at the top lane, but in the meantime, Silent, diving under the tower, didn't have enough regen. Maybe could have tried to survive by uh, healing up on one of the trees there and tread switching a bit, but with the tower diving up onto the centaur on the top lane, with just two, well, they do go down for that resolution. He'll disappear back off into the jungle, and it looks like, yeah, he is going for this Hand of Midas. So a pretty unusual build here on the Shadow Fiend. Normally, I mean, Shadow Fiend is such a fast farmer. I would argue you don't need to go for this unless there's, you know, unless you're far behind. But Shadow Fiend, like I said, he's such a fast farmer. He generally doesn't need this sort of item. But in the meantime, things going relatively even for these two teams. Far is relatively even as well. Ink Visitor is a little bit ahead of Silent. That's probably just the the fact that he's a Storm Spirit. He can do some more AOE damage, so he can he can last it under tower just that little bit easier. See there, it's just a, it's just a lot easier for him to do. Although <laughs> I say that and he misses a creep, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much typical as far as how things go for me. Looks like a bit of a miss pull here. This will double up the waves. Ink Visitor might want to think about just trying for a tower push now, but. Well, Mag does only have the one level of rocket, and at the moment, actually, Obi-Wan Banan, he's smoked up, looking for Resolution here, but Resolution playing it safe. Let me just check this. This is going to be the Midas Shadow Fiend, then. Expected to absolutely farm up a storm. Apparently, the way they want to try and deal with this late-game Naga Siren, this, this Radiance farming Naga Siren, is not actually to try and kill it a lot early. To shut it down and try to win the early mid game, but they're aiming for the they're aiming for the late game with a void and a shadow fiend. A shadow fiend, especially with his hand of Midas, they have the opportunity to lock him down with the Chronosphere and then do a lot of damage between them. And now Chronosphere actually used on Judo. The ancient apparition all hits as well. The ice blast and Judo. He looks like he'll probably take down from this. It's pretty close. Actually, he's gonna live. Obi Wan Banan. They turned it around. They went to on this on a fly, but they got the cold feet off on Obi Wan Banan. Silent trying to do what damage he can, but at this stage doesn't do much. And with Big Num's stun missing, neither team lose anybody. A bit more in the way of ults used from the side of Empire, but Q Insane, they end up committing both their supports up here. Just to try and save their Sentinel, who just about makes it out. Did not see those two coming in, but Silent, he backed off whilst the Chronosphere was still on the air. Uh, the Centaur otherwise... Could have possibly still got that kill. Looks like he might be going for Battle Fury here. Could just be a casual Ring of Health. Battle Fury, pretty standard build, but not particularly special either way. Would be su wouldn't be surprised by it. And now, actually, Ancient Apparition gets the kill on Obi Wan Banan here. Obi Wan Banan actually killed in the base, so Ancient Apparition just sniped him. Then, nice little sight for him in the mid lane. Aloha Dance, he songed Ma Mag here. They're going to try for the kill. He doesn't have cogs or anything. This will be an easy pick off for them. Ink Visitor and Big Num working together there. Big Num gets the kill, which is nice for him because he was suffering a little bit for levels as well as farm, in fact. Can the same be said of his other support on the top lane, though? Silent and Vanscore, they're going for a push here. Empire, they've got good levels on their support so far. Where's the other support? Obi-Wan Banan, he's managed to pick up level 6 just now as well. A ulti hits onto Judo, doesn't do the damage, just gets the debuff. Silent is trying to come in for a kill here, but he gets... Well, he's going to get nightmared up by the Bane. Now the Fiend's grip as well, and Silent actually going to go down. Bad move from him. Storm Spirit as well, goes for a kill in the middle lane. With a, couple, with a bit more help, Mag is here, he doesn't have his hook shot just yet. He's going for phase boots, and it looks like blade mail afterwards. And this game, they had a passive laning stage, and then both teams just decided this was the end of trying to be passive. And well, with a couple more kills here, net worth, it looks like it's uh, it's favoring it Visitor so far. He is going to be rushing that safe lane Bloodstone build on the Storm Spirit. He's already a fair amount of gold there. We'll probably pick up either his VIP booster or his energy booster now. Could just get his Perseverance, I guess, but... He should have this well before the 20 minute mark, so this will be a pretty well-timed Bloodstone for him. Top of the net worth, followed by Aloha Dance here. Up to 2400 gold now. He is vulnerable while this Song of the Siren is down, however. Now 
Echo Siren. We'll just bottle up the uh, the Invis Rune there. And this Shadow Fiend Midas, I mean, it's a great item as far as getting on top of levels, as far as getting on top of farm. He's above anybody else as far as levels right now. If you look at the uh, if you look at the levels, there's the levels. He is right at the top, but resolution with three deaths, two assists. He's very vulnerable. He needs a BKB. I mean, in this game though, that is a dangerous item to use, of course, because Naga Siren she counters BKB pretty hard. In Snare and Song of the Siren both counter it. But for the moment, Empire, they feel very weak. Both their core heroes, the Faceless Void, he doesn't have any damage yet. He's saving up, trying to get his Battle Fury online. It won't be a particularly fast one, but not badly timed either. The only person on their team who's really great at fighting at this stage of the game is the Clockwork. And, well, for the moment, he's going this Blade Mail build. Understandably, because there is a lot of damage on the side of Q Insane he wants to try and reflect. But he's also... You know, he's fairly squishy for an, a hardcore initiator at this stage of the game. Not as much in the way of HP as a Centaur Warrunner who is still saving up for his Blink Dagger. He is trying to rush it here, dropping his Tranquil Boots and trying to farm, but... In the meantime, neither team actually pushed a tower except for Empire, actually. Alright, so neither being... they did... And now Clockwork in the middle lane, they get a kill on the Naga Siren here. Bane's Fiend's Grip turned around onto him, but they reinitiate up onto Vanscore here. Vanscore slowed down a lot, he will go down. And an even trade there as far as kills, but the kill that Empire get is way more worth it. They kill off this Naga Siren every time you kill the Naga Siren before she gets up her uh, her Radiance. It's, it's crucial, it really is, because... Every minute that this Radiance is prevented from coming up is another minute where she's vulnerable. It's another minute where she has to farm out in the middle lane or out on the safe lane and she just can't do anything else. Q Insane though, they do take the tier 1 top or on the bottom lane though and group up to there. Storm Spirit playing very aggressively here. He's going to have his Bloodstone pretty shortly with that tower kill as well. He's only a few hundred gold away from it. But Empire, they need to use this mag hookshot every single time that it's up. Ancient Apparition ulti. Looks like it went onto the top lane here. Hit, yeah, it does hit onto Judo. Just trying to stop him from farming, stop him from being able to uh, to actually fight. And for the moment, it seems to work for that advanced score. Seems to, uh, seems to be underneath the, uh, one of his wards here. Going into the mid lane. He will be picked off. Well out of position versus Q Insane there, and I mean... He tried to TP out, but he sort of just walked into the wrong place at the wrong time, and... Not sure what his plan for that one was. Either way though, Big Num, he had used up his Vendetta for this. He's now going for a... Uh, he's now going to pick himself up and earn his shadows. No quick Blink Dagger on him as a support hero. He's simply just not getting the farm for it. Resolution now actually going for... Wow, big plays Resolution, apparently. He is going for the Blink Dagger first, skipping the BKB, it seems. Understandable in some ways. But the initiation and the lockdown from Q Insane is so good, it's almost like he still needs it, but... It's just a dangerous item to go for against the Naga Siren. You just kind of don't want to. So instead, he's picked up a Blink Dagger Hand of Midas, which is about as dangerous as you can build. Silent. Still not got his uh, Battle Fury here. It will be coming now. And what, as the Storm Spirit, he's picked up his Bloodstone. So he'll have a nice big mana pool, but up on the top lane here. Initiation up onto Silent. Double initiation from Judo now. He's saved a bit, but the double cogs come out from Empire's Mag. He's Fiend's Grip in. The AA ult hits on two, though. Big Num, as well as Judo go down. Resolution blinks on top of the Requiem of Souls. Blows them up. And three killed there, but now Ink Visitor jumps forward, uses up most of his mana. He's still got a fair amount, but he looks like, yeah, he's just going to jump down to the low ground. And Empire, well, they do lose their Faceless Void there. That's crucial time lost on the core hero who needs to be farming a fair amount. He needs some sort of survivability item. He needs more damage as well. The big thing about Faceless Void is if you get the perfect Chronosphere, all you need is damage, but... You can't rely on the perfect Chronosphere every single time. And if you don't Chronosphere this Naga Siren, she'll just song and you won't be able to do anything. 
And now mid lane push from Ink Visitor as well as Aloha Dance. Double Chronosphere as well as the AA ult. They catch everybody. Resolution, he's going for Ink Visitor here. Ink Visitor trying to dodge the damage from with the uh, with the zip. He goes down. The turnaround though, Judo a big num. Judo blunk blunked in. That's not a thing. Blinked in. They try to go on silent. Silent is going to go down to Judo here. Vanscore, he's the only one here. Now Mac has turned up. Always want to fly, is even in the middle of this fight. The hook shot into Judo. Judo goes down. Cold Feet does proc off onto Big Number. Ink Visitor, he's brought back, it seems. No, it's just the. Uh, it's just the shorter re cooldown on his. Uh, on his respawn. And wow, a big five man wipe into Empire there, despite a great initiation for them. They didn't finish off that Naga Siren, they killed the Storm Spirit, and with the Bloodstone, he respawned faster, TP'd in, came in, and, well, the team fight it gets turned around onto Empire, a 3 for 5 in the end. Almost lo losing more on the side of Q Insane, but very close fight for both teams. But in the end, Empire, they just didn't have the survivability, their Void was killed off pretty quickly, and now that's now two deaths in a row for him. The Chronospheres have been great, but... The fact is, if you can only get a good Chronosphere and then the enemy team counter initiates, you just die too fast, and that's happened to him a couple times now. Every time he uses Chronosphere, Q Insane, they're there with other people. Like I say, if you don't get the perfect Chronosphere, you can still be stopped. The stun coming in from the next assassin, the uh, the Bane, the Naga Siren song, all of these are ranged things that you can use to stop the. Uh, to stop the Void from doing damage while he's in the Chronosphere, so he might need a BKB himself this game, but for the moment he needs to farm up Resolution. Looks like he's going for one as well. Big Num going up here. He's going to go on Always Wanna Fly. Always Wanna Fly quickly bursted down, and that is one of the issues with Ancient Apparition. He's rushed a mech and an urn, and he's still ultra squishy versus these guys. The big thing, though, the big item already up. Didn't get to talk about it too much, but... Aloha Dance here, he has finished up this Radiance on the Naga Siren, and you can see it on the map, there are already Naga Siren illusions all over the map. Every now and again there, there's sort of more transparent versions of Naga Siren's little mini-map icon. And uh, yeah, she's just being able to farm up a ton here, 20 minutes in, she's already got it, plus another 1600 gold. And Q Insane, going up versus Empire here, and apparently giving them a good run for their money for the moment. A lot of it's been on their, their team play, their coordination. Oh, and Big Num runs up into the Sentry Ward, though. Vanscore, he is going to pick him up. Damage already done, though. The AA ult comes over the top. Empire, they do have the Chronosphere, but they don't actually need it to take an out. Silent, he even jumps out of there just to be safe. They do lose their Rubik, but well worth it for the kills on those two. And Silent... He traps himself in the trees. He was worried about the counter initiation, maybe coming from Judo or one of the others, but they lose their Nyx, they lose their Storm Spirit. But every single time in Vigor's Ink Visitor, he's picked up such a fast Bloodstone that every single time he dies, he's back on the map within within a very short time indeed, within seconds really. And look at these Naga Siren illusions already going straight into the enemy jungle and well just difficult to deal with for the side of uh for the side of Empire, we all know what happens to this. Oh, Silent gone on on the top lane here. Judo does get taken out for it, but Silent almost killed off. Rubik, he only manages to steal the Nightmare then. And this Mech and Urn of Shadow is proving absolutely necessary. And like I said, this Void just not proving very survivable. And that's the big issue for him. Unless you backtrack everything... You take a lot of damage. This hero just doesn't have that much in the way of armor, and not until late, and definitely does not have much in the way of HP. And Q Insane just seems to be focusing down as a target right now. The Invisitor. Roaming around the enemy jungle here, looking for people he can maybe pick off. Looks like he, uh... Oh, well, he's forced Resolution back. Resolution closer to his BKB now. Silence, still not gone for anything in particular yet. Yeah, that's the BKB finish. Now the initiation goes up onto Silent. The AA ult does hit over. Is he going to get the Chronosphere off? He needs to. Does manage to get the Chronosphere off. The rocket comes through too. They're trying to finish off Judo here. He's pretty tanky. Judo though, he does die, but Ing Visitor has come up here as well. He's used up most of his mana. Mag is trying to get out of there. Big Num goes down in the meantime to an urn. They get the stun off on Ink Visitor. He's actually used up all his mana. 
Manages to one, jumps out of there. He doesn't finish off Vanscore, but again, they get the crucial kill. Silent goes down another time, and wow, he's going full glass cannon build here. Picks up a Mask of Madness. I mean, he's already struggling for survivability. This will give him... I mean, it's nice to have the lifesteal, but... This is going to make this uh, this Radiance Burn hurt more. It's going to make these initiations hurt more if he uses it at the wrong time. I don't know. I'm worried for the side of Team Empire right now. They're fighting back, but... Well, at least this Nanga Siren, she's not bulled out of control completely. The Shadow Fiend is still a little bit behind her. Uh, Bane and Shadow Fiend in the meantime, they both deny off a tower. Both teams deny it off, and... Well, for the moment, if we look at the gold graph, it's still relatively even... Q insane, they seem to be pulling ahead, but Ah, Empire, they're just behind them, but my issue is still they need this this faceless void to do the absolute perfect chronosphere in the late game. Because otherwise they have no way of killing off this Naga Siren because she'll constantly have sleep up. She'll be very tanky as well, because she'll have farmed up a lot. I mean she's already farming up a lot. I don't know about this. I'm just worried for the side of Team Empire now. The Faceless Void pick, I mean, it seems to... It's, it's great as far as their coordination. The AA ults are always hitting over the top of it. It's a huge AoE disable with the Chronosphere, but he just dies too fast. Nyx Assassin here, stealing a DD rune with Vendetta up as well. This could be a potential kill. The Empire, they have three people smoked here, sitting inside of the Roche pit for the moment. Not sure what their plan is entirely, Nyx Assassin. He's scouting out for the moment here. Their smoke has been broken. They know the Nyx Assassin is going to be here. It looks like they picked up a gem, it seems. Yeah, gem on the Shadow Fiend. So the initiation goes off on him. Aloha Dance. He does Naga Siren's song and TP out of there. Nothing they can do about that one. Mag just was not able to get the hook shot and battery assault in time. If he had, then the Naga Siren wouldn't have got out of there, of course, because she can't cast Song of the Siren with battery assault on her. It just stuns her too often. And her animation is too long, but they do force her back. They get the AOL on her, which will annoy her more than anything. And, well, Empire, a smart plan for them. They go for the Roshan. Silent will pick this up, probably. And that'll give them survivability on him. He can use his Chronosphere as, as you know, wildly as he like. He can jump right in with the Time Walk. And as long as they get the Naga Siren, they're, they're pretty set now. This, uh, this Roshan for them... The Aegis makes a big difference this game. Now going for the uh, the tier 1 tower push mid. It's taken them a fair amount of time to do so, but with the BKB up on the Shadow Fiend, that's at 10 seconds actually still. And with Silent having an Aegis, he's, I mean, he's immortal. At least for one life. Oh, Vendetta. Stolen by Rubik. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Magus. He's looking for somebody, but Q insane. They know the danger they're in right now. And trying to keep back Mag. He's actually gone for the Bone 7 build here. He's going to be their initiation target. Smart one to go for, but the Chronosphere only actually catches one here. Big Num going very aggressively forward. They do save Mag. In the meantime, Naga Siren takes out Vanscore. Looks like Rubik just went in too deep here. Oh, Initiation goes on to Resolution. He takes a fair amount of damage. His BKB won't save him now. And now they go on to Always Wanna Fly. Ink Visitor, they'll try and pick, catch him out. They do manage to cancel his TP. And Always Wanna Fly, he goes down. And in the end, uh, Silent, he just backs out of there. He says, nope, can't do this anymore. And the big thing for me is that that Chronosphere, it's great to get themselves the nice kill on the uh, Nyx Assassin, but it meant the Naga Siren, it meant the rest of the team were able to just do whatever the hell they liked. And... Well, they had their merry way with them. The reinitiation up on the Shadow Fiend as well. And yeah, only him and Clockwork actually managed to get out of there. Now Sheepstick finished up on Storm Spirit. Wants to be able to deal with this Faceless Void in Chronosphere. And also great for initiating. The BKB on the Shadow Fiend won't do anything versus him now. He has to have the BKB beforehand. Faceless Void picks up a Mithril Hammer here. Could be a few different items. It could be BKB, Deso, or Maelstrom, all of which are good Faceless Void items. I wouldn't say there's much in the much point in getting a Deso this game. So I'd have to assume BKB or a Maelstrom, but... If it is going to be the Maelstrom, it'll help with the Naga Siren Illusions. Give him some more attack speed, which he does need right now. He's pretty low on that. 
And if it's the BKB, well, the only thing he has to be afraid of is Inquisitor getting the perfect initiation on him. But that is worrying. Now Q Insane, grouping up, going for the top lane here. Initiation, up onto Silent. They get the stomp off as well. He's going to go down. He's used up his Aegis. Can he get the Chronosphere up onto Invisitor here? That's the essential one, but he gets stunned again immediately. Now Invisitor, creating a lot of space in the fight. Goes onto Vanscore, kills him off. Mag takes out Obi-Wan Banan. Now, finally, they get the Chronosphere off, but Silent is stunned in the meantime. He is trying to kill off Invisitor. Invisitor's still surviving. He's got the... No, he is going to go down because of the... Uh, because of everything on him. And, well, Empire, they do turn it around. The Naga Siren, she's trying to song her way out of there, does manage to make it. Oh, the Illusion's almost killing off Vanscore here. He has to be careful. She almost goes down, but just about manages to survive. An Empire, they turn around what looked like a good initiation from the side of Q Insane. Well, Silent, he turned around. He did manage to get his Chronosphere off on Ink Visitor. That's the biggest kill for them, because he is balling out of control right now. Empire. There's still a fair net worth is getting worse and worse for them. Initiation again up onto Silent. This time he doesn't have Aegis up, so this is going to be a full death for him. The AA ult comes in. It's going to hit up onto Judo. He doesn't get the debuff onto Storm Spirit, and it doesn't matter anyway because Storm Spirit, he just wants the kill. He's jumping up, going on to always want to fly. He's used up most of his mana, but he's so fast the Cold Feet doesn't proc. Almost killing off Ancient Apparition there. And certainly doing a lot of damage to Vanscore, who actually steals the Ball Lightning. That's a nice escape for him. Resolution. DD Rune. He's picked up his own Maelstrom here. Managed to blink out before the Radiance actually got a tick of damage on him. Wow, that's a, that's a little bit unusual. And it looks like, yeah, it will be the BKB for this Faceless Void. He recognizes the problem. This Sheepstick, he needs to use his BKB early in the fights with the Sheepstick around. But if he doesn't have one, he's guaranteed dead anyway. So better for him to go for one than to... Uh, than to avoid it and just be useless in the next couple fights. Because the last couple fights, I mean, when he had the Aegis, he was able to turn around and do something with it. But now, it just proves the vulnerability of him. And the game perhaps going to a bit of a lull here. And the person, I keep on not talking about them because they're not being involved. Aloha Dance, he's basically Song of the Siren and TP'd out twice. But that's exactly what he does. He songs the siren. He TPs out twice. He's now up to a Manta style. Got 4k gold up on him. Could decide for pretty much anything he likes. They're sending the... Uh, they're getting a pipe up now. Up on Judo. He's got his blink as well as a VIP booster. He's pretty tanky. Difficult to deal with. And the side of Empire. They're just not getting the same... They don't have heroes that can farm anywhere near as fast. And... With Ink Visitor picking up a very fast early Bloodstone, he's able to do that as well. Looks like he got a, Did he get a suicide in the last fight? I think he did. Must have missed that in the fight myself, but... Well, apologies, he apparently managed to get the suicide in the fight, and that's actually a pretty big deal for him. Silent, being protected by his supports right now. They have to stand near him, just in case uh, Ink Visitor goes on him. They do not have the gem anymore, I believe. Now, actually, they do still have the gem. Needed versus this Nyx Assassin. No gem on Q Insane. But if they pick up that item... Oh, Silent. He's out of position here. He could be gone on. Big Gnome. He's gone in, though. The Chronosphere goes up on two. They get the Ancient Apparition ult as well. He's trying to do the damage to Invisitor here. He gets counter-initiated, though. This is the problem for him. He's just too squishy. He's going to go down. Invisitor jumping into the middle of the fight twice there. Now, Aloha Dance. He has turned up. Resolution. He pops the ultimate. Aloha Dance trying to get out. He will just, again, song and TP out of there. Mag looking for another kill here. Trying to go on to Bignum. But Empire. They get initiated on. And in the end all that happens is they lose their Faceless Void again here. Just too vulnerable of a hero. He's great for lockdown. He does good damage too. But he doesn't farm particularly fast. And he's easy to kill. And oh no. Resolution. Been gone on by Ink Visitor here. But Ink Visitor. He forces him to use his BKB. Tried to take the, uh, the regen rune from him there. But it looked like Shadow Fiend actually managed to get it first. 
One now top lane. Big Num gonna try and initiate onto Empire's Mag here. Mag being gone on. Judo comes in for the counter initiation. He has got this armlet as well as the blade mail, so he's very tanky here. He's even building up towards an Aghanim Scepter. AAL hits on both of them. Silent is trying to follow. He doesn't want to pop his Mask of Madness, though. It makes him too squishy. And Mag thought about counter-initiating again with the Hookshot, but after using that armlet for so long, he ends up running out of HP, and... Well, he's getting closer towards that Aghanim, so he will be a lot tankier once that's picked up. But even so... Struggled a little bit there, and... Silent, without his Chronosphere, they just simply can't go for the kills. He needs this BKB as well. It's coming up very shortly, but his survivability just isn't enough. And even when he does get this, at that point, you know, Naga Siren, she's ready to turn up for fights now, fully. She's got Radiance, Manta Style, and a full heart. She's got Boots of Travel, so she's able to move all over the map. Be as big of a pain in the ass as you could possibly be. And that just leaves him in a situation where he can come in on this Naga Siren, he can use Song of the Siren when the, when the Void BKBs, and then suddenly they can do anything they like to him. So he has to get Chronosphere onto this Naga Siren. They're grouping up now, they have their gem. They're possibly going to go for this Naga, but she's so damn tanky. It's going to take a lot to kill her. Resolution go, being gone on here. It looks like they're trying to fake it out, though. They are going to turn around and get everything onto him. They do kill him off. Bursted down by Resolution with the Rec Room of Souls. Nice initiation from Banscore as well. And now they'll group up as a four-man. Invisitor is around in the area. Looks like he's saving up for a Shiva's Guard as his next item. See what there is an Obi Wan Banan here. Looks like he's going maybe BKB. Could be a lot of different items, but the nice thing about getting that kill as well, I mean, outside of the fact that you killed the enemy carry the Naga Siren, they also didn't use the Chronosphere. But that said, he is sheeped up. Resolution gonna go down. He didn't manage to get his BKB up. BKB now up by Silent. He only manages to catch a couple, and now the counter initiation from Obi Wan Banan. He doesn't even gonna. He's not even gonna die from the Ancient Apparition ult there, and Silent doesn't manage to get any kills from this, Ink Visitor is going to take him down, manages to get out as well, Aloha Dance, he's chasing down the remainder, Vanscore is going to try and TP out, he actually managed to make it, no, the Nyx Assassin managed to get the Impale through the trees, they forced that Aloha Dance forward to try and get him, the Centaur Conqueror tries to save him, he actually gets the kill. Rubik goes down, but it doesn't even matter that he's killed by the, by the neutral. Here is the point where Q Insane will go straight for the enemy base, ignoring the Roshan, going straight towards the high ground. There's no buyback on the uh, Faceless Void, no buyback, no there is buyback on the Shadow Fiend, but I think they know what's happened. They're using Glyph first, they need this Chronosphere, that's the only thing they can use, and until Void's up, they have a couple more seconds afterwards, they throw out the Ancient Apparition ult, but it hardly does any damage, the pipe used by Judo. The creep wave will be killed off quickly as well by a, by a big swing from Judo with his double edge and Aloha Dance. He takes out the range, he takes out the melee racks, they'll kill the range racks as well. And Empire, from a mistake all the way around the tier 1, from not using their BKBs quick enough on Resolution and on Faceless Void. And Silent, well they lose the melee racks for that, the range racks is left on minimal health. And we do have a quick pause right now. Just want to check everything is uh Just want to check everything is okay in the chat, etc. It seems like it mostly is. Apologies if my connection is not very good, guys. It's poop. This is a known issue. I am trying to upgrade it soon, but I, right now I just do not have the money to. If I was able to upgrade it soon, it looks like there's something wrong with the overlays as well. Oh god, no, please. <laughs> Alright, hopefully that should have fixed it, guys. 
apologies if it's not been working entirely properly. Like I said, mostly being a co-caster. Hopefully you're enjoying my play-by-play -play though as well. I'm trying to do this all on my own. Later I will hopefully be joined by Vikramond. I think he will be joining me, I'm pretty sure. Rubik has reconnected to the game. This gives me very little time to have this lovely bit of cloudy lemonade from freaking Asda. Congrats, Asda, you just got plugged. Support esports. <laughs> and for the moment, yep, looks like we will be going back into the game here. Empire, if you just got here, guys. Which would be really strange, because you just got here during the pause, but... If you did just get here, guys, Empire, in a best-of-one game versus Q Insane... Well, they just lost their mid-racks. They got BKBs on both their Shadow Fiend and their Faceless Void, which is a hero you do not see very often. But they simply don't have quite enough damage right now. Despite everything they have, to kill off this Naga Siren quickly and effectively... And to get the right fights, and if they don't use their BKBs at the right time, this Storm Spirit is just playing with them, just toying with them. He can actually disable both of them. If they don't get their BKBs off in time, he can jump in, Scythe one, Electric Vortex the other, Shiva's guard them both. And well, suddenly both of them are ultra vulnerable, resolution, not exactly the tankiest, and of course, Faceless Void. One of the squishiest heroes you're going to be playing ever. <laughs> That, of course, is if you're not Shiva and you actually play carry heroes. Because <laughs> Shiva plays like Sniper and Mirana outside of carry heroes, as far as carries are going, concerned. Which is not exactly the widest pool, but... Never mind that, the side of Q insane here. They're grouping up, they're going for the Roshan, but... They look a bit tentative as to whether they're ready to attempt this. They don't have their Centaur with them. He's actually building up for a full heart at this point, not saving for buyback. Naga Siren, she used it up in the last fight, but it doesn't even matter. It's not touching, not touching her gold lead. Q Insane, they pulled ahead 7.5k. It's only 30-odd minutes in, though. Almost 40, so doesn't matter a huge amount. They stole the gem, actually. Vanscore, too used to having his gem easily and quickly killed off there. And Resolution, he's blinked in here. He's soloing versus Roche. He's been bashed up, though. Q Insane's Big Gnome has actually gone into him. Resolution tries to use his ulti. He's getting bashed up by Roshan, though. Roshan almost kills him off, and in the end, it's going to be the Storm Spirit. Big mistake for Resolution there. Doesn't manage to get out of there in time. And suddenly, Empire, they get themselves a free Roshan. They do have buyback on this Shadow Fiend, but... Oh, what a mistake for them, though. Aloha Dance, he'll take this out. He doesn't have the greatest solo physical damage. He's an illusion hero, so trying to kill off Roshan on his own, not exactly the easiest for him. In fact, Storm Spirit does almost as much damage as him. Speaking of a lack of damage, the big thing for me is that Silent, he's just too far behind on net worth. Could be initiated up, could be by Big Num. He does manage to get his BKB up. Gets the Chronosphere on two. The buyback from the Shadow Fiend. He's held in position. Looks like Big Num will just about go down. Initiation from Mag. Manages to hook in Aloha Dance. That's a crucial one to get in. Mag is still going to die for this. But Invisitor is jumping all over this. Trying to get the kills. He's actually going to get Cold Feeted up and killed. He does heal everybody from using it though. Resolution gets the Requiem off. Aloha Dance. Almost goes down, but he managed to get the Song of the Siren off. He doesn't have a TP scroll. Looks like they're going to have to try and re-engage here. The BKB up, up from Resolution. They do kill off Aloha Dance. Not sure why he tried to stay in. I guess he would have been pulled after anyway. Ink Visitor trying to finish off what he can with Judo here. They do actually manage to get him. Ink almost dies just to the Death Requiem. A buyback comes out from Silent, but he isn't able to do anything with it. Ink Visitor is just too mobile. And his only disable is, of course, the Chronosphere. It's almost like he needs an Abyssal Blade or something. Not exactly ideal as far as item choices on the Faceless Void, but... They need more to be able to deal with this this damn Storm Spirit. He's not easy to kill. He's got a lot of armor, a fair amount of HP, and... With Judo protecting him with the pipe, and with him being ultra-mobile... 
Aeolt hits into the uh, Roshan pit. Doesn't go on to Ink Visitor, though. He does pick up the Aegis. They'd much prefer to have it on the Nakasone, who's actually currently disconnected. Judo picks up his heart. And that's nice for him. The regen won't do anything, though, versus the... Uh, versus the Ancient Apparition ult. An Empire here, struggling. Looks like we will be having a pause in a few seconds. It, the only reason we're not is... It's just not a big deal because right now Naga Siren is disconnected. Apparently I did manage to fix the overlay. Fantastic. Alright. I just wanted to check the chat in the meantime, check that the overlay and everything is working, but again, the big problem for Empire right now, they're able to focus down one target, but they can either kill off the Storm Spirit or the Naga Siren. Anybody that gets caught in the Chronosphere is, of course, gonna be 100% dead. It's just such a good disable for them. Yes, the Faceless Void, he doesn't have too much in the way of damage right now, and he doesn't have buyback either, which is a big deal for him, but... The real problem is that in that fight, they focused down, they got the Naga Siren. She wasn't able to TP out of there. Not sure why she didn't, but I would have thought she... I, were her boots of travel off uh, cooldown? I actually didn't see. I'm sure somebody in chat will know, but she didn't TP out. She chose or was forced to stay and try and fight. If she tried to just run out, she would have been caught up by the Faceless Void or you know anybody else, the, the clockwork even, and she would have still gone down. So she goes down. Pretty quickly in the fight, and Ink Visitor just runs circles around them. And with Judo helping him out, it's like they have to get the Chronosphere on both the Storm Spirit and the Naga Siren. If they don't get those two, then they're in an incredibly bad situation. And even if they do, Bane can still Fiend's Grip the, the Faceless Void. He can still Fiend's Grip the Shadow Fiend. If he's in the right position, Vanscor might not be able to get to him. Because Vanscor doesn't have a Blink, doesn't have a Force Staff. So if he's over the other side of the Chronosphere, there's nothing Vanscore can do about it. He can steal it, but that, that just doesn't mean enough. The Ancient Apparition, nothing he can do either. And again, Clockwork, if he's in the wrong place, if you hookshot into the Chronosphere, you'll just get frozen on the outside of it, basically. They need to get both of these two core heroes, these two who are doing the most damage to them, and who are so fat right now. Storm Spirit... More farm than anybody on the side of uh, Empire right now. More than Resolution, who had a very early hand of Midas. And has been farming up all game with this. And for the moment... Well, Q insane. The ball is very much in their court. The, ra the range rack did finally go down here in the middle lane. Of course, the melee creeps just pushing like that will pretty much eventually do that. And with the range racks not able to actually regen up, it goes down. Something I should look at that I've not seen too much here. Nyx Assassin, he's picked up a 4 staff as well as a Necro 1. Not too much use out of the Necronomicon level 1 at this stage of the game. Maybe if he gets to level 3, it'll be useful for... All sorts of different things, you know, it, it'll do a lot more damage then, but the big thing is it gives you more map control as well, just like a gem would. The Bane, he's got himself a 4 staff, looks like he is working towards a BKB, could be an Aghanim Scepter, but I feel like BKB just a more sensible option this game. It will help him just that little bit, will mean that he can't be interrupted by anything but the Chronosphere. And of course he isn't going to be using the, uh, the Fiend Script until Chronosphere is down. Full heart as well as the gem up on the centaur. He is incredibly tanky, incredibly hard to kill. Look at his physical resistance right there. 44%. Magical resistance of 47%. Not an easy time killing him. Empire's mag. He has finished up his Aghanim Scepter here. Aghanim's up on the Ancient Apparition as well. With level 3 ult on him. With the mech as well. He's fairly tanky. Not an easy kill anymore. And the big thing is, he's able to do a ton of damage to the side of Q Insane. The combo, of course, the Empire have been working with, have been 
chronosphere into that into that ice blast and just blow them away with that but yeah until that point until they get that well they can't kill him off looks like we're still waiting around guys sadly I do not speak Russian though I will hopefully have someone with me later who does speak Russian and have Vikram on so I can't tell you what all this stuff means apparently it's trash talk but I think Vigna might be taking the mickey a little bit considering that Igor GHK is in fact the admin so he's not likely to be yeah what happened I want to know alright <laughs> no shit Sherlock guys for those of you who are just joining us as Sorek asked a couple times in the chat right now Shiva is going to be casting the Bounty Hunter series with Wagamama that is a best of five game, King of the Hill, Bounty Hunter series, whatever you want to call it. You can go check her out on the uh, on Hitbox TV right now. Uh, slash Bounty Hunter English, I think. I'm not sure. Somebody will link it in the chat, hopefully for you. Otherwise, I am G Advance, normally her co-caster, but I am solo casting for the moment. Later on, I will be joined by Vikramond. Well, Vikramond, however you want to pronounce it. Vikramond sounds like Biker Mice from Mars. It sounds like he sounds like a biker mice from Mars kind of thing. Did anybody remember that show? That show was awful, awful beyond doubt. But I kind of loved it because it was cool. Uh, <laughs> but that was like a, that was. When, I mean, when I'm a kid, I don't mean like I watched that last week or something. I should go watch it after this game though. <laughs> but yeah, I will hopefully later be joined by Vikramond or Vikramond, however you want to pronounce it. I don't know how he pronounces that actually. I've never heard him say it. But hopefully later I'll be joined by him. But for the moment, I am solo casting here, standing in for Shiva. This is the excellent Moscow Cup, guys. If you do enjoy the tournament, please, you can buy yourself a ticket. You can watch this in-game, which means you get nicer quality and you can not have to cope with my terrible camera. Because I'm a little bit bad at the, the, uh, the old camera movements and stuff like that. Much more used to... Uh, to uh, being co-caster for people but hopefully people do enjoy my casting today guys if you do thank you very much in the uh, in the meantime otherwise yeah we're just gonna have to stick around waiting for the game games currently paused as has been well explained by ink visitor here it's a very complicated and difficult issue to understand but there's a player disconnected <laughs> so for the moment we're just waiting for him to come back in and is the Naga Siren who is, of course, right at the top of the net worth, though she did die here uh, a little while ago. Buyback is up on her. She's trying to build up a uh, a butterfly now, and that'll put her, well, not quite six slotted, but five slotted at least. Only one other item that she can get then, and at that point she'll have to do start doing some Eternal Envy 7 slot tricks where she brings a courier with her to swap out items and stuff if you haven't seen that guys go in youtuber or something it's absolutely amazing the eternal envy seven slot naga it's completely silly and i imagine the people on the other team who are just playing a pub game felt really bad because uh yeah because it was it was it's one of those things that very few people would think to do even less people would actually bother doing it and most people who do it would screw it up I know I'd screw it up. I've actually tried the same thing. I screwed it up. Did not go well, guys. Um, not good enough for that sort of stuff. Still waiting on this game to actually go back to things. For the moment, guys, the big thing we need... We need damage on this Faceless Void because I want this game to... I want this game to keep going. I, I, this game's been fun to cast for me. As I said before, I love Faceless Void. He's one of the best heroes to cast in the game because he can completely turn around a fight. Traps everybody in the Chronosphere, but he's ultra vulnerable. And heroes like that are just... They're the best ones to, to cast, really, I think. Um, AA load. I, I don't know what any of this means. Alright, we're going for a remake, guys. We're going to reload the game from, like... 15 seconds ago, maybe.
This will be a quick reload of the game. Look at that, guys. Fancy official tags. Yep, sorry about that one, guys, but we, uh, we've we gone in for a little bit of a reload. There's a commercial playing right now, so if you cannot see that commercial, either you live in a weird country or you have ad block off, at which point, please, guys, do turn that, uh, do turn your ad block off. It really does hurt us, like, genuinely directly, because adverts equal money and a lot of time and effort and cash goes into us being able to cast these games for you. So, uh... Yeah, we do hope you do watch the ads. I know some of them can be really annoying and obnoxious. A lot of them, in fact, but... Like, come on, guys. It's like a 60-second ad for, like, an hour of entertainment. Your other option is buying a ticket, which doesn't support Shiva or me or anybody else who casts at all right now. At least I, I don't think so. Don't know. Unless we get invited to Moscow, which would be very, very nice. Looks like we are going to be reloading from the, uh... From the point, don't worry guys, this is not a full remake of the game, the game saves. And we reload from that point on. Very little should have changed, maybe a little bit of positioning, but that'll be pretty much it. Yeah, you can see. Taking over match ID blah, 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 at time 4021, we are loading into the game right now. Doesn't my loading screen look cool as balls? I got that from, uh, I got that from like one go through. Alright guys, this will probably mess up several things. These reloads are still a little bit glitchy, but... If you've just turned up, guys, this is the excellent Moscow Cup. Best of one game between Empire and Q-Insane. We're actually 40, 40 minutes and 30 seconds through the game already. We're just doing a reload because of a uh, bit of a messed up disconnection error. We will reload into this. Everybody gets their heroes. You can see all the towers go down. Net worth, etc. All of it returns. The creep waves will probably be broken. I'm not going to lie about that one, guys. This is not an exact science. These reloads can be a little bit balked sometimes. And yeah, looks like everybody seems to be okay. Looks like Vanscore will be reloading into the game. But otherwise, guys, it's okay. In the meantime, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'm very much enjoying solo casting here. It's nice to be doing some play-by-play -play every now and again. That's actually what I originally got onto the channel for. But I've been doing uh, I've been doing analysis for Shiva for, for months and months now, which is definitely uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. It means I have to spend a lot more time learning stuff and less time yelling at people. And by people, I mean you, the viewers. And just waiting on the last person to get in here. Everything will be pretty much the same. It's from just a little while ago where Ink Visitor and Judo went for the Roshan. I think, um... Well, Empire, they know about this. But I would assume they should just... I mean, Honor Rules would at least state they should just let them do the Roshan. I did see some little squiggles drawn on the map there. I don't know what the admins are saying about it. Nobody said anything. Uh... Yeah, in the meantime, guys, please, you can support me and Shiva. You can follow me at twitch.tv slash setmyjibs. You can sh follow Shiva right here on Shiva Gaming. She also has a website. I'm sure there's a bot or three that can spam out all the information for it. I also have a Twitter. She has a Twitter. But right now, Shiva, guys, she's doing the Bounty Hunter series. That is a best of five game between Dog and VP versus Virtus Pro and Team Dog. Woof, woof, Team Dog. I'm a little bit of a Team Dog fan, I'm not going to lie, because it's a dumb name. And I like myself some dumb names and weird teams. Sorry, guys. All casters are a little bit biased, I'm not going to lie. None of us like really long farming teams, pretty much, apart from, like... More like professional, play, like ex-pro players and stuff. They're bigger fans of the whole like... Like we're going to farm up and stuff. Because they're like, you know, they see that as more like solid. And then like casters like me, 
who are actually like awful at Dota and could never be a professional player, but can but can yell at the screen a lot. We're generally fans of teams that will get shit done. Apologies for the swearing. But you know what I mean. Still waiting on a restart of a PC here. Guys, I'm not accusing you all of ad block. I apologize. But for the moment, guys, we're still waiting on a pause. I've noticed the hilarious thing. This has happened to me a couple times now. Whenever we get into a pause, nothing is happening. We're waiting on the teams to reconnect to the game. Viewers go up by 200. Seems to make a lot of sense, but at the moment, guys, if you have just joined me, I am G Advance, currently solo casting on twitch.tv slash Shiva Gaming. Shiva is currently casting the Bounty Hunter series with Wagamama between Team Dog and Virtus Pro. This is, of course, the excellent Moscow Cup. It's a best of one game between Empire and Q Insane. We had a little bit of a remake. Or a remake from 40 minutes and 30 seconds in. As Empire, well... First, Q Insane had issues. Now, Empire having issues. There are lots of issues. Issues are causing me some serious problems. Because, let's face it, guys. I have, in fact, already talked about all the issues... That are coming up for Empire. One thing I do want to talk about. Actually I didn't talk about this. Is Silent. He's on this faceless void here. I clicked on him ages ago to talk about it. He has not got a lot of damage right now. Now he doesn't actually have the 0 plus 89 that you're seeing on the screen. That is a replay glitch. Or not a replay glitch. That is a glitch for the reconnect. For the remake. He has a fair amount more damage than that. But the real issue for him is he still doesn't have that much damage. Certainly... Not as much as any of the... Uh, it still doesn't show the damage for any of them, but he certainly doesn't have as much damage as any of the other big carry heroes on the playing field right now. And he needs some sort of late-game damage-dealing item to be able to cut through that Nagasiren to give him a chance against some of these other very tanky heroes on the side of Q Insane. The Nagasiren, the Storm Spirit, the Centaur, all of them are getting difficult to kill. Even the Storm Spirit, I just said, he's got a ton of armor right now. Physical resistance is 64%. Now, I saw some people theory crafting, I think, as to what sort of item he needs. I can tell you right now, he does not need it, so you are wrong. Because getting armor costs less than minus getting minus armor. That basically means that getting armor late game, or getting minus armor late game, is not as cost effective. So, a Deso, it loses cost effectiveness as far as how late you get it. It's a great early mid game item. Not such a great late game item. It's useful if you can get it on multiple people. Maybe on an Ember Spirit or something like that. Because then you can hit lots of people with that minus armor. But otherwise, not a great late game item. Specifically for just targeting down so one person. And especially because armor builds up over time anyway. Really, at this stage of the game, he needs something more major. Maybe even, I would normally say, you know, one of the standard things to go for is crit. But getting a Daedalus at this point, not going to do very much because this Naga Siren, she's going to keep on farming up and she's very, very shortly going to have herself a full butterfly. And at that point, you need an MKB. Silent is going to absolutely need an MKB this game. The only options are those expensive damage items for him. The problem is he's still not even that survivable. Another option, maybe even something like a Satanic, give him a, few more, a bit more time in the fights. But the real problem is he's being bursted down. Well, his BKB's off, so that probably won't do it for him either. He's getting bursting down and stunned down as well. I am talking an extravagant amount, trying to find something to say, but Vanscore apparently has the slowest PC to restart in Eastern Europe. That's not true. Eastern Europe has a lot of terrible PCs. I know I've been there. It's got a lot of terrible PCs, seriously. It's got a lot of terrible stuff. Cars as well. It was terrible cars in Eastern Europe. Well, guys, I practically run out of stuff to say at this point. Void's not a terrible hero. Somebody just said Void was a terrible hero in chat. Alright, so in reality it's like four minutes ago when somebody said that. But I looked through the chat. 
And somebody said that Void's not a t Void is a terrible hero. Void isn't a terrible hero. The thing with Void is, and the thing with a lot of Dota heroes that you don't see very often, is they're there for specific circumstances. Now, there's several things that Void absolutely needs. He needs, he 100% needs every single time, he needs a safe lane. He needs safe lane farm. He needs a defensive tri lane to help him. He needs two ranged heroes as well to help him. As well as that, he almost certainly needs a BKB and a fair amount of damage items. But the great thing about Void is that even with minimal damage items and even without a BKB, if you do get a Chronosphere on somebody and they're not incredibly tanky, which admittedly a fair number of people on the side of Q Insane are at this point, if he's not incredibly tanky, well then the uh, the Chronosphere is basically a guaranteed kill. And if you get multiple people in it and your supports are there, you can get guaranteed two or three kills. So that's what Faces Void is. He's basically going... Every 120 seconds at level 6, I can get a kill. Every 100 seconds at level 11, I can get a kill. Every 80 seconds at level 16, plus, I can get a kill. So that's the great thing about Vaceless Void. He's just, you know, he's only good in specific situations. He's particularly bad at getting initiated on. And really, Q Insane, they, they, they're able to do that a lot this game. Alright guys, looks like we will be having a fair amount of waiting time here, so I'm gonna switch over to an overlay. What? What? We're gonna be waiting a fair amount of time here, because the Rubik hasn't reconnected yet. <laughs> Rubik has reconnected to the game, guys. Looks like we're gonna start. I swear, somebody said something like 20 minutes. Or maybe they're saying, you know, we, we have to go in 20 minutes. I don't know what other Empire games they have on today. But either way, guys, the game is finally back on. It looks like Empire, they will give them the honor of having the Roshan again. They won't even fire the AA. Actually, no, they do fire the AA Ice Blast, but it's not going to do anything. Judo is still going to get this. Actually, no, they turn it around. Silent comes in. Storm Spirit still gets the Ages. Silent ends up just using up his Mask of Madness and BKB and the dirty Eastern European play here from these teams. Silent is going to end up paying for this. He's taking a lot of damage. They've even got the Necros doing damage to him. A Visitor has come back into the fight. He's practically completely out of mana. But now they're going to get Always Wanna Fly as well. Hook Clockwork. Hook shots in. Actually managed to pick off three here. He's going to get Judo maybe. It's so close. He does manage to get Judo. Vanscore is here as well. They're stealing spells. Throw everything back onto Ink Visitor. They're trying to get... Ink Visitor here, there's no way they're going to get him. He's still got plenty of mana, and unless you can burst him down or disable him for long enough, these dirty, dirty plays here from Empire. Previously, they did not stop them from doing the Roshan. The Faceless Void did not jump in, but this time, <laughs> he jumped in, tried to steal it from them. Didn't use Chronosphere. Surprised he didn't use Chronosphere inside this, uh, inside the Roche Pit. Maybe it wasn't up when he, uh, when he jumped in. Didn't quite see, but... Either way, Empire, well, they get a couple of kills, but they lose their Faceless Void. We'll be back up in, well, only 20 seconds. It's pretty much worth it for them, just to get some kills on the board, and they use up that Aegis and the Storm Spirit, so this does mean that perhaps Q and Sane will think, rethink about trying to go up the high ground immediately as soon as they respawn, but... I mean, they're still getting more farm on the map in the meantime. They're still getting it on Invisitor. They're still getting it on, of course, Chomi. Who's on this Naga site? Wait, Chomi? Did Chomi just... That was a Loha dance a second ago. Alright, okay. Chomi has now taken up the role of a Loha dance here. They've had to be forced to use him as a stand-in. Looks like Naga accidentally paused the game here. I don't think he intended to do that. But yeah, so a Loha dance. He's had to get out of this game. And he's had to be replaced by Chomi here. An entirely different player, I'm pretty sure. Unless he's just changed his name in between. I'll check it. I actually want to check his team profile, just in case. This is... I've never heard of this happening. Changing player mid-game. Yeah, this is this is Chomi. I, I, I was pretty sure Chomi was a different player. I remember him being on uh, Ink Visitor's old team. But now full butterfly. Finished up on him. Seems like there is some sort of bug here. 
or resolution. They're complaining about it, but they're being gone on here. The initiation goes on to Bignum. They get resolution, instantly burst it down, but they get the three man, the full team inside this chronosphere. It's everybody in here. Silence doing the damage he can, but Obi Wan Banan, he's going to try and turn us around. Chomi is almost dead. He does manage to get the song and the siren off, though. He's got his TP boots up as well. He, yeah, he is just going to try and get out of there. Smart move from him, but even so, Empire. A huge chronosphere there from Silent. Catches absolutely everybody. Courier killed in the meantime. And Naga Siren. She actually manages to get a kill on Always Wanna Fly. The Ancient Apparition, even with the Aghanim Scepter and Mechanism. Not tanky enough to deal with that. And Silent, he gets himself a nice couple of kills. They do lose their Courier for it, but... And they don't quite get the Snagger Siren. That's the biggest issue for them. At the very least, they did a lot of damage. They forced her back. But Silent needs to be careful here. Invisitor is coming back again. He's got his bull lightning. Silent, he's way out of position. Invisitor, he's got the sheep stick. He's got the Dagon as well. They have so much to try and deal with him. A little bit of a misplay though. And they actually don't get him because of that misplay. Silent. BKB TP's out, and oh, what a misplay from Invisitor there. He'd been playing so well this entire game. But then, he goes for the hit too early, didn't break it using a Dagon. Used, used a right click on the uh, Faceless Void, and that put the Nightmare up onto him. He wasn't able to get his Scythe of Ice off, wasn't able to get his Vortex off, and he ends up just... Well, Silent, he does have to use his BKB, which is now only down to 5 seconds. Only five seconds on the Shadow Fiends as well, but... I thought that was maybe the bug then, that he wasn't getting souls, but... Okay, I don't know what the bug is, but... Yeah, either way here... They do pick up the crit on Silence, so he's not actually going MKB. That means he's relying on Chronosphering somebody next to the Naga Siren, hitting a different target so he gets all the hits in... And then the uh, the splash damage being what he uses to kill off the Naga Siren. He can't target the Naga Siren directly though, because she has a full butterfly up. 35% evasion. He just won't be able to do the damage. And relying on a bit more to do the uh, relying a bit of RNG to hit and to do significant damage with his crit. It's just not good enough. Surprised he didn't go for MKB, but with no buyback on him, I guess he just had to try and buy out. But this is a critical time for the for Empire here. Net worth means nothing. It's all about the buybacks. And look, it's on nobody on their team. So many people have used a lot of buybacks this game. The only people with buyback, it's going to be Obi-Wan Banan, who's still trying to build up a BKB. And well, what used to be Aloha Dance, but is now Chomi on his Naga Siren here. The slow push comes in from Q Insane here. They're trying to do what they can, but you can see Resolution. He's not able to defend this tower on their own. They use up all their AoE. Even the lightning procs from the Mjolnir. Not able to do enough. They do kill off the creep wave eventually, but the tier 3 tower goes down. And Chomi, he can he can keep on doing this. He's gonna just keep on throwing out these uh these mirror images. And they'll continually and any time the Empire put themselves out of position, or any time Q and Same want to, they can go for this kill. Oh, hook in now, goes for Mag, he's gone on to Bignum here, Bignum does force himself out, now the Centaur, the Stampede goes on, but the big fight is here, they're going on to Resolution, he BKBs, ult, ulti winds up, does a fair amount of damage, Silent, already jumped forward, went to use his Chrono Fear, decided not to, Mag, still fighting on the other side of the fight, incredibly tanky, Bignum, almost goes down there, but doesn't actually get hit by the AA ulti, and in the end, Empire, all they lose is their Clockwork, and a big opportunity here for the side of Q Insane. They don't have their Aegis. They have a take on two now on the Storm Spirit. They're going for the range racks here. Necronomicons are going for them as well. And they have to hope for the absolute perfect. The absolute perfect Chronosphere. But it doesn't look like they're ready to commit. They almost need their clockwork. He is very tanky at this point, and he can do some significant damage, but Judo just comes in at the end. He's so tanky, they know they can't kill him, and he finishes off the range racks. The melee barracks go down as well. Empire in a difficult situation, and this is going to be a big upset in this tournament. If Q Insane managed to actually take out Empire, yes, it's only a group stage, but it, it, I mean, it makes them a lot more fearsome looking. Silent 
fighting these illusions, losing to this illusion in this creep wave here. He needs to get a for Chronosphere soon. And the uh, Chomi diving the base, going after Vanscore. Vanscore might even die from this. He has to throw the illusion back just to deal with it. He has to get to the. He has to get to the fountain. An empire. Now, initiation from Clockwork. Does manage to get Judo. Resolution is in here as well, but he's sheeped up. They do manage to get the AA ult and the Chronosphere up onto Chomi and Invisitor. Invisitor goes down. Chomi, he doesn't have mana for the Song of the Siren. This could be the opportunity to get him. But even so, they've lost all their racks at this point. Mega Creeps are up. Resolution trying to take out Obi Wan Banana. He'll go down as well. This is going to be everybody if they can get them. Always want to fly. Being targeted by Judo. But Empire, he just has to get a bash. Silent doesn't get get a bash on him so judo does take out always want to fly immediate buyback from him resolution gets the triple kill judo though gets a double kill immediate buyback from the naga siren she tps she throws out illusions with the mirror images and the uh, and the slightly more difficult to deal with manta style illusions and just they're everywhere they're just wrecking this base right now not that there's much left of it they're just going for GPM. The gem is left up the top here. The Naga Siren actually managed to take out Silent in the meantime. He was not strong enough to fight them, and he calls it GG at this point. He has buyback, but they don't want to do this anymore. Empire, beaten by Q Insane Gaming. This was the excellent Moscow Cup, guys. Thank you very much for watching. My name has been G Advanced Games. We'll be coming on a little bit later, but we still have two games more for the excellent Moscow Cup. Otherwise, though, I will be shutting off the stream. We'll be coming back later for those. The schedule I will put when those games are in CET when I find out could be about an hour, I believe. But thank you very much for watching, guys. Of course, if you want to know where Shiva is right now, I've been through it before. She's currently casting the Bounty Hunter series, so I, her normal co-caster, am doing the excellent Moscow Cup because she's with Wagamamu right now. If you want to go switch on to the Bounty Hunter series, guys, I'm sure a bot will tell you exactly where that is. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. I hope to see you guys later.